This is equally the worst marathon running shoe and possibly the best marathon running shoe. I'll tell you more in a second. Hi guys, welcome along. I'm Tony James and today I'm looking at the Adidas, Adizero, Adios, any other age you can put in there, Pro 3. This is what Adidas is saying is their marathon shoe. And to be honest, they can't be wrong because how many marathons has this shoe won? It recently won the 127th Boston Marathon. So straight up, I've borrowed these shoes off somebody else and I've done a few runs in them and these are my initial thoughts. I know I'm a little bit late to the party on this. They've been out a fair while, but I wanted to see what all the fuss has been about with regard to these shoes. So very quickly, this is a UK size 11, which is a USA 11 and a half. I generally take size 10. To me, Adidas previously, it's always been a case of you should really think about sizing up. But with this shoe, I think I should size down and go back to my true to size. This 11 is possibly just a little bit too big for me, though it hasn't caused any issues at all. Maybe a 10 and a half would be a better, better fit for me. But as I say, it's been no problems at all this particular shoe. It's size 11 UK, it's coming in at 260 grams, which is about nine, 9.1 ounces. So the other stat we talk about is the drop, heel to toe, 6.5 millimeters. But if you're like me, you've probably got no idea what that feels like anyway. So that's, I think that's totally irrelevant when you talk about drop, unless you are a serious runner at your top end of the game, then obviously it would make a difference. But generally to you, to me, doesn't make any difference, but it's 6.5 mil. So as I say, it has been winning marathons all over the place. Uh, it blew Kipchoge out of the water in Boston. Well, I think that was a case of it was a little bit too cold. Also, I think the Adidas runners ganged up on him, but that's another story. So yeah, it won the Boston Marathon, so I thought I'd have a look at this shoe. And to be honest, uh, from the few runs I've done so far, I like it. This is probably my favourite um, Light Strike Pro shoe I've run in. Now, I did have the original version of this, the, the original Pro, and I did like the shoe, but I did feel it had some limitations. It did feel st a, a stiff, it did feel a little bit clunky. I did enjoy running in it, but those were the little things. But this shoe just feels a hell of a lot better than that previous incarnation. So first of all, Let's talk about it top to bottom. The upper made with the 50% recycled materials, which Adidas seem to be doing these days. They've even done it with this top, which is great. Kudos to Adidas for doing that. But it does make the mesh material feel a little bit plasticky. And it's one of those things that the more you wear it, the more flexible it gets. But when you get it out of the box, it does feel very plasticky and very stiff. Uh, but trust me, uh, with the other Adidas range shoes that have been like that, as you wear them, as you use them, as you break them in, they do get a lot more pliable. So yeah, it's the uh, breathable upper material. To just to show you how breathable it is, we've got the torch. We're gonna to put the torch in there. Okay, we'll stop it flashing. There we go. And you can see the light through there. That's uh, how breathable the material is all the way around. Yeah. You can see that in there. So, yeah, very breathable. Um, a nice upper in that respect. Can, it's got a bit of suede at the toe and uh, down the sides just to uh, strengthen that plastic up a bit, which is good. Now, the reason at the start of this video where I said this is the worst and the best running shoe is... To get the best out of this shoe, you've got to put a bit of work into the shoe itself. And that all comes down to these laces. As you can see, there's two eyelets here at the bottom, which are a lot further out than up the top. Now, I think these are what's causing the problem. A lot of runners, uh, including Run Tall with Tim, thank you for doing your review, Tim. Uh, Ed Bud's mentioned this as well. And also my friend Mark, who, who ran the Manchester Marathon in a pair of these shoes, they've all said there's a problem with the lockdown. Uh, in Mark's particular case, after running um, the Manchester Marathon, the top of his foot was all bruised. And it's down to this lacing cage and this tongue. Now, the tongue really is just, I don't know if you can see that, it's just a piece of material. There's no padding on that at all. It is just like a piece of felt. So the tongue is given minimum protection. And unless you can get it locked down right, there's a lot of rub coming from these particular laces um, when, when they're on. Now, I do know when my, my friend Mark ran in them, he used this top eyelet. And I think 
that is what caused his problems. I've not been using the top eyelet. I've just been, as it is, out of the box. And I've had no issues. But when it was, Mark used it and it was really clamped down, I think with the little bit of protection that Tom gives, that these laces in this configuration are causing problems. So if you have a pair of these, if you have dialed in the laces by lacing it up a different way, please let me know in the comments below. But that is the major fault with this shoe. It's this lacing system. If you can get it locked down, if you can get it right for you, then the shoe works perfectly. If not, you can run a couple of times and you'll be rubbing your feet and you'll just put them to one side and never touch them again because it's hurt that much. So be aware of that. If you do get a pair of these shoes, you do need to dial in that lacing system so it's suitable for you. That probably is the major drawback of the shoe. In the heel box, in the heel counter area, you've got padding in there and you've got this. And I never know, is it is it flap up or flap down? Which way? Which way to you? Do you use it for more support on the top or are you just using it to pull it on and then you, oh, and then you curl it down? <laughs> Which way is it supposed to be? Please let me know in the comments below. So yeah, all in all, the upper is good. The breathability is good. The sustainability of the materials is good. It's just the lacing system. And if you do use those top eyelets, the laces are very short. So let me know if you've got a pair and how you've overcome that. So as I say, upper is very good. Let's move to the midsole. Light Strike Pro, my favourite foam. I, I, I know I run my marathons in Vaporfly 2s because I didn't have these in time for, for the Boston, but this Light Strike Pro is my favourite midsole. It's one, again, like the upper, where you've got to break it in. You can put these on, out of the box, go for a run and think, wow, these are heavy. Don't like them. There's no spring. There's no return. Yeah, they are like that. The foam has to be, well, let's call it agitated. You've got to get it out there. You've got to get it moving. You've got to use it. You've got to put 15, 20, 25, 30 miles into this foam to get the best out of it. And the more you put in, the better it gets, the springier it gets. I love Light Strike because it has that touch of firmness, but the more you use it, the better it gets. In the midsole, you've got the energy rods, which you can see through the uh, through the outsole there. Five of those light fingers across the front. In this iteration, there is no plate in the back. There was a carbon plate in the back. And I think that's what's caused the problems with the, the original version, because it did have that plate in the back. They did give it too much rigidity, too, not, not rigidity, gave it too much stiffness in the run, where you weren't feeling that you were getting the right type of return because this one when you hit the floor you really do sink into it and it really does feel like it propels you off so the removal of that plate i think has been a fantastic idea and the energy rods instead of an uh, a carbon plate in the in the in the uh, sole itself I, I think that's brilliant it's it works well and it works well for me so all in all the midsole get it run it it gets better with use i think that's the takeaway better with use Finally, we'll go to the outsole. Can't go wrong. Continental rubber all the way through. Uh, this part's got a bit of a, a, another part of rubber here to protect it. But as you can see, these shoes have probably done about 50 miles now. And you can see there's slight wear coming through on that Addis Aero there. But that's the only problem uh, with this particular shoe. Put it a bit closer there so you can have a good look. So yeah, Continental rubber in all the places it uh, matters. The um, light strike is visible in certain areas and you can see there's no pitting, there's no damage to that. So all in all, the outsole is pretty good. It's pretty tough. The Continental rubber is the same stuff you put on your car tyres. It holds the ground well. And this particular tread pattern seems to be better. Again, in the original version, it was just a sheet of Continental rubber. It looked like you were running on racing slicks. But in this, it looks like you've got a little bit more grip. And when I've been out there on the pavements and been on the roads, no problems at all. As you know, I broke my shoulder a couple of years ago, so I'm very conscious of where I'm putting my feet. And with these shoes, I've felt very confident when the foot's hit the ground, felt very confident going around those corners as well. Probably a little bit more slippy on grass, but then again, every shoe is. So the outsole, fantastic. Midsole, brilliant. The upper, I'm going to say in the main, is good, but... The big bone of contention, I'm going to go back to it, is that lacing system. You have to dial it in for you so it doesn't cause you any problems. So be a very aware of that. Overall, 
I love this shoe. I'm going to go with this. This is the best marathon shoe that Adidas have put out there. Don't think it's any good on your shorter distances, on your 5Ks and your 10Ks. No, this is a long distance shoe. This is for your half marathons. This is for your long runs. This is for your full marathons. This is definitely a long range shoe. No, don't, don't be running your shorter distances. I don't think you'll get the best out of that shoe. So it's not an everyday shoe. It's specifically for doing that long work. Overall, I'm impressed with it. It works for me. Will it work for you? Only you know that. Don't forget to hit subscribe, turn on the bell notifications, make sure you give this video a like. And if you want to know how I did in the Boston Marathon, go and have a look at this video now.